Hi there, I'm Tom from Vape Club, and today we're going to be taking a look at vaping illness, specifically the vaping illness which has been affecting the US for the last month or so. Whether you vape or not, you've very likely seen media reports in the news of a mystery lung disease which has supposedly been linked to vaping. The idea today is that we want to take a look at what the CDC and the FDA have actually said about this and compare that information with the media reports we're seeing on a daily basis to see how they stack up against each other. So, who are the CDC and who are the FDA? The CDC are the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention and the FDA are the Food and Drug Administration, both US organizations equivalent to our, in the UK, Public Health England. Their responsibility is to ensure the public's health, plain and simple. At the time of filming this, there have been anywhere between 25 and 31 deaths associated with vaping illness in the US. There have been a further 1,300 reports of illnesses supposedly or possibly associated with vaping illness in the US. There also seems to be a correlation between these vaping illnesses and deaths and the use of THC cards, specifically black market or illicit THC cards. Along with that correlation, there is a further correlation that most of these deaths are occurring in states where marijuana or weed is not legal. What is a THC cart? A THC cart is a vape cartridge which contains THC, the main psychoactive ingredient in marijuana or weed. The composition of these liquids in these carts is significantly different to those found when vaping nicotine and nicotine associated products. So just how much of a correlation is there between the vaping illness and the use of black market THC products? Well, so far, 80% of those experiencing symptoms have self-reported using THC products, black market THC products. Beyond this, 20%, some of whom have claimed to have not used black market THC products because mum stood next to them or because their health insurance depends upon it or their current employment depends upon it, have unfortunately later tested positive for THC use in their hair and urine samples. So the already very strong correlation of 80% is probably much, much higher. So that sets the scene. We understand what the problem is. We understand that the problem seems to be predominantly, if not exclusively, black market THC products. Let's see how that stacks up with what the CDC and the FDA have actually said. So the CDC have issued the following advice. The CDC recommends that people should not use e-cigarette or vaping products that contain THC should not buy any type of e-cigarette or vaping products, particularly those containing THC off the street, and should not modify or add any substances to e-cigarette or vaping products that are not intended by the manufacturer, including products purchased through retail establishments. That is the CDC's specific advice of what you should not do. You notice how there was no mention of nicotine vaping products there. Well, they go on. At present, the CDC continues to recommend that people consider refraining from using e-cigarette or vaping products that contain nicotine. So you should not use THC, but you should consider refraining using nicotine vaping products. It's subtle, given, but there is a difference. They carry on. If you are an adult, using e-cigarette or vaping products to quit cigarette smoking do not return to smoking cigarettes. Use evidence-based treatments, including healthcare provider counseling and FDA-approved medications. So, the CDC have been as clear as we can expect the CDC to be. You should not use THC, and you should consider refraining using vaping nicotine products. It's also very clear that you should not return to smoking cigarettes. The FDA have thankfully, in my opinion, been much clearer on this. Vaping illness update. FDA warns public to stop using THC containing vaping products and any vaping products obtained off the street. No mention of nicotine whatsoever. Merely do not use THC products and do not use any products bought off the street. Thank you FDA for at least being a bit clearer. So, we've heard from the CDC, we've heard from the FDA. It seems clear to me and hopefully to you what they're recommending. Do not use THC. Consider refraining using nicotine products if you're that way inclined. Do not return to smoking. Let's compare that advice from the official public health bodies and organizations of the USA with what we're seeing in the media every day. Vaping claims life of youngest victim. 
Vaping death toll hits 21 and disease cases surge. Vaping cartridges with potentially deadly chemicals. Vaping disease causes chemical burns like World War I. Shocking scans show how vaping can block your lungs. E-cigarette smoke could cause lung cancer. 1,080 sick, 23 dead from mysterious vaping illness. Scientists chase cause of mysterious vaping illness. Should vaping be banned? Should vaping be banned? Why people are dying from vaping in the US and not the rest of the world? Globe Editorial, we know smoking kills. Vaping? Question mark? The jury's still out. So, the 20 headlines, not a single one mentions THC specifically. We have mentions of e-cigarette. We don't have mentions of e-joint. But we do have mentions of e-cigarette. And of the 20, only one mentions THC in the small blurb appearing underneath the headline. How does that make sense when we look at the CDC's advice and the FDA's advice, which are clearly saying this is a problem with THC, specifically black market THC products. If that was as bad as it got, it would be bad, but it gets much, much worse. From an article published in the Daily Mail in the UK, we have the following excerpts. Is this proof vaping can kill? They're supposed to be safer than smoking, yet e-cigarettes promoted by health bosses are being blamed for a British man's death and 13 fatalities in the US. This article was published on the 30th of September, 2019, and at that point there had been 13 fatalities in the US. But what's this mention of a British man's death? The man in question is Terry Miller, who unfortunately and very sadly died of lung disease, lipoid pneumonia, months after starting to vape. Specifically eight months after he started to vape. The article makes no mention whatsoever that he smoked for 41 years. The excerpts continue. Mr. Miller, who died in 2010, is thought to have been the first British vaping fatality. Although the coroner delivered an open verdict, his widow, Glynis, thinks he would have been better off continuing to smoke. He would have been in ill health, but he'd have lasted a lot longer, she said. Who says vaping is safe? It lulls people into a false sense of security. Now, to be completely fair to the Daily Mail, they have not said explicitly that smoking is safer than vaping. All they've done is put front and center someone's opinion that smoking is safer than vaping. This is clearly directly opposite of what the CDC and the FDA have said. Just to remind the CDC have said if you use vaping products, nicotine vaping products to quit smoking, do not return to smoking. That's as clear as you like. But here we have the Daily Mail publishing an article which strongly suggests the complete opposite of that, based on someone's opinion. Glynis, however, raises a very good question, and it ties in with the rest of what the CDC has to say in terms of recommendations. Who says vaping is safe? Well, no one. No one has ever said vaping is safe. There is context, always context, and that context is always smoking. Vaping is 95% less harmful than smoking. That's not my word, that's the word of Public Health England. The CDC continues to say, e-cigarette or vaping products should never be used by youths, young adults, or women who are pregnant. We agree. If you're under 18 or are pregnant, you should not be using vaping products of any kind. 100% correct. Adults who do not currently use tobacco products should not start using e-cigarette or vaping products. We 100% agree. We are a vape shop and we've had potential customers explain to us that they're just interested in vaping. We will always ask if they are a current smoker. If they are not, we will always, always recommend that they do not start vaping. Even if a customer says to us, I just wanna try some zero nicotine products, no nicotine at all, the answer will be the same. If you do not smoke, do not vape, full stop. The CDC finish off by saying there is no safe tobacco product and the use of any tobacco products, including e-cigarettes, carries a risk. Yet again, we agree. There is no safe tobacco product, including vaping. All that can be said for now, as has been said for a long time, is that vaping is 95% less harmful than smoking combustible tobacco. Sadly, as a result of what we consider to be incredibly inaccurate and dangerous media coverage of what's going on in the US, we've had customers get in touch explaining that they're considering or have already switched back to smoking tobacco, which is a real and genuine travesty. These are customers that have got in touch with us. We can't speak for the people that 
haven't got in touch with us nor anyone else and have maybe just made the switch back based on the fear mongering and lies in the press. We cannot stress enough just how dangerous this misleading and inaccurate reporting is. You are literally playing with people's health and potentially their lives. We think it's despicable and the media should be absolutely ashamed of themselves. For those in the media that have been peddling these lies, we'd like to give you a quick reminder of just what you're pushing people back to. It's fine, I'm so used to I don't want anybody to have to go to what I'm going to. As far as we're concerned, there is no vaping illness. There never was. Not at least when it comes to vaping nicotine products, which have been widely available across the world for over 10 years, with no such deaths until last month in the US and the US alone. That should give you pause for thought. It seems the media are at odds with the facts and they're at odds with the advice of the likes of Public Health England and Cancer Research UK. I know personally who I would trust with my health more, the media or Public Health England, but what do you think? When it comes to your health, who do you trust more? Public Health England with their peer-reviewed evidence and research, or the media, the tabloids, like the sun? It's your choice, you decide. If you've been scared by the reports in the media and it's put you off vaping, so be it. One thing we would say, do not go back to smoking. Cancer Research UK suggests that giving up cold turkey is highly unlikely to be successful. Giving up with patches and gum is pretty much highly unlikely to be successful. You have a 60% chance increase of quitting with vaping, but you have a 225% chance increase of quitting if you seek professional help and have someone guide you and support you through the process. Do not return to smoking. We'd like to leave you with the thoughts of Public Health England and some of the doctors that work for Public Health England. From the Pharmaceutical Journal, uh, we have the following. Scares of a vaping illness could put lives at risk. Public Health England warns. Public Health England is concerned that people who use e-cigarettes as a smoking cessation tool may be put off by news from the United States potentially increasing the risk of relapse. Lives can be put at risk by health scares around vaping-related illness. John Newton, the Director of Health Improvement at Public Health England, has warned. On the 26th of September 2019, Newton wrote to Norman Lamb, the chair of the House of Commons Science and Technology Committee, on the UK's position on e-cigarettes following deaths associated with vaping in the United States. He said, advice on using e-cigarettes to help quit smoking should be emphasised because of the danger that people might stop using them out of fear following news from the United States. In quotations, we are concerned that the public seem to increasingly think that using a proprietary e-cigarette could be dangerous, which might stop smokers using them to stop smoking, he said. This reinforces the need to have clear and consistent communication from public authorities about the relative risks of smoking and vaping. It is no exaggeration to say that inflating fears about e-cigarettes could cost lives. Newton said the US Centers for Disease Control and Prevention had recently been clearer about the illicit products implicated in this outbreak. And most, if not all of these, were related to illicit vaping products, including cannabis derivatives. He said it was important to distinguish between the US outbreak, which had mainly affected young male users of cannabinoid inhalers, and the products used by around 9 million Americans and 3 million people in the UK, where we have yet to see any comparable effects. And we have an article from The Independent with words from Martin Dockrell. Martin Dockrell, who works for Public Health England and is the head of tobacco control at Public Health England, said, A full investigation is not yet available, but we've heard reports that most of these cases were linked to people using illicit vaping fluid bought on the streets or homemade, some containing cannabis products like THC or synthetic cannabinoids like spice. Unlike the US, all e-cigarette products in the UK are tightly regulated for quality and safety by the Medicines and Healthcare Products Regulatory Agency, or the MHRA, and they operate the yellow card scheme encouraging vapors to report any bad experiences. Public Health England said e-cigarettes were not completely risk-free, but were far less harmful than smoking tobacco, which kills more than 77,000 people a year in the UK. It added, there is no situation where it would be better for your health to continue smoking rather than switching completely to vaping. Linda Bull, Professor of Public Health at the University of Edinburgh, warned this was irresponsible.
She said it seems highly unlikely that widely available nicotine-containing vaping products, particularly of the type regulated in Europe, are causing these cases. All of the evidence to date suggests that illicit marijuana vaping products, THC oils, are the cause. In particular, a compound called, forgive my pronunciation in advance, tocopherol acetate, which may be the culprit. Authorities who are reacting to these cases by advising no one to vape are by default sending the message to people who have quit smoking through vaping that they should return to tobacco, which we know carries multiple risks to health. We'll be covering more on this over the coming weeks, so make sure to check back for more videos if you want to know the truth about what's happening in the world of vaping. All links to relevant subjects discussed in this video can be found below. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye for now.